Good morning. Happy 29th day of August 2021. Welcome to the United Methodist Church of Merced and Sunday morning worship. We are so glad you're here. Thank you for choosing to be with us this day and to worship with us. Welcome. We are aware that there's so much going on in our lives through pandemic and in your own situations. Life this past week uh, may have included great trials, concerns, and awareness of chaos in this world as Afghanistan and, and hurricanes and civil unrest and social issues are all bubbling up in this world. And so this day, as we come, as we come to this sacred space, we choose to worship together from our homes, from our offices, in, around, past Merced, um, all connected through the internet or by physical transcripts in some cases, connected as one body, one faith, desiring to honor and glorify God, desiring to be led by the Spirit, loved by God, and directed towards Christ. It is our hope that we will indeed know the love of God, grow in the ways of Christ, and be prepared to go in service to the world empowered by the Holy Spirit. We welcome you this day. God bless us in this journey together as we worship, give, receive, live into the life of Christ. You are welcome. We are so glad you're here. You are holy gift. As we prepare for worship this day, I'll start with a few announcements. First off, we have indeed switched over to only online services for the time being. In this uh, temporary space, uh, we invite you to go online. You can get our worship services as you have already for those of you who are already here. But otherwise, you can go to umcmerced.org, click on worship. You'll find past services. You'll find the current one. And we welcome you to worship at whatever time you'd like to join us on that uh, mode. We will also be recording this service, so it will be made available for weeks ahead, and you can find it at the same place, umcmerced.org, clicking on worship. On site right now, we are limited to two things. One is small groups in 12 or less in participation. Uh, of course, observing all of the COVID protocols, temperature checks, um, social distancing, mask required, and no eating or drinking on premises. We are also continuing to do the food distribution. That is a drive-through distribution. And so this Thursday, this Thursday, we will be distributing food for those who are in need of food. If you know someone who uh, could use it for themselves, for their families, by all means, tell them to come. We'd love to serve them with what we have. We will feed as many as we can with as much as we can, as long as we can. And so this Thursday, 10 a.m., drive-through distribution. If you'd like to help out with donations, with contributions of items, with your own physical presence and, and your energies, please uh, do so. You know where to find us here at the church, United Methodist Church of Merced, 899 Yosemite Parkway. If you'd like to volunteer, give us a call at 209-722-5777, and we'll let you know how to do that. Thank you. Bible studies will continue via Zoom on Mondays at 4 o'clock with our own Pastor Victoria Schlintz. And that's 4 o'clock via Zoom. Let us know if you need those details. Right now, we have uh, gotten a few people to help us out with counting and posting. We could probably use another person or two. If you're interested in helping us out with that, let us know. We are also looking for persons to help us with uh, media. Audiovisual design for the church, for the services, even off-site, off we need those, those help. So if you are interested in helping us out with that, please call Adam, 209-722-5777, and he'll uh, make a time to train you and have you ready to help us out. We'd love to have you. Your gifts indeed keep us going, even through and for um, and past pandemic, so we are in need of those. If you'd like to send in your tithe or second mile giving, by all means do that, 899 Yosemite Parkway, Merced, California, 95340. We appreciate your gifts and your support. You can also do that online at umcmerced.org, clicking on Donate. I believe those are all the announcements for right now. So let's do what we came here to do. Let us join in worship. Amazing grace, how sweet 
the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing Word, my hope secures. He will my shield and portion me as long as life endures. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. Once more, my chains are gone. I've been saved. My Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever. An ending love, amazing grace. We are so thankful. I invite you to pray with us this day as we began worship. Holy and awesome God, we exalt you and lift your name on high. Even as we have awakened into this new day, we've received favor and grace, new mercies for this day. We are ever aware of your presence and your goodness in our lives. And so we come to you. Having experienced life and love and laughter, life and pain and sorrow knowing you have brought us forth in healing and wholeness picked us up from the depths and raised us up to life in you so let us offer our praise our love and devotion let us offer our thanks offerings and worship let us reflect on your holiness your favor lasts a lifetime we may weep through the night but there is joy in the morning 
Let this time of worship be holy and living sacrifice to you who are faithful. Transform all our wailing into a whirling dance of ecstatic praise. Wrap us in the glory garments of gladness that our hearts might sing out, bursting with joy. For you alone are worthy to be praised, and so we praise you. Amen. I invite you to continue with me in the call to worship as a responsive reading. And so the response you will offer is, you have collected each tear, not one will be lost. I'll prompt you when it's your time to respond. Creator God, we come to you in the midst of our joys and tears, for we know you have created each tear, not one will be lost. For you've kept track of all our wandering and our weeping. Each of my tears is recorded in your book of remembrance. You have collected each tear, not one will be lost. The very moment we call to you for a father's help, the tide of battle turns and enemies flee. This we know you are on our side. You have created each tear, not one will be lost. We place our trust in you and praise you. We place our trust in your word and praise you. You have collected each tear, not one will be lost. What harm could man do to us? With God on our side, we will not be afraid of what comes. Our hearts overflow with praise to you for your promises. We will always trust in you for you have collected each tear. Not one will be lost. We thank you. With all of our hearts filled with gratitude for all you've done. For you have saved our souls from death and kept our feet from stumbling so that we can walk before you bathed in your life-giving light. You are greatly to be praised. You have created, collected each tear. Not one will be lost. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from Jeremiah 8, 21 through 9-1. Since my people are crushed, I am crushed. I mourn and horror grips me. Is there no balm in, in, in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is there no healing for the wounded of my people? For the wound of my people. Oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes were a font fountain of tears. I would weep day and night for the slain of my people. The gospel reading for today is from John eleven thirty two to 36. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. God's grace is more than sufficient. It's amazing and abundant, even in the midst of tears. We weep. Sometimes we're embarrassed by our tears or hopeless in the midst of them. The tears of others can make us uncomfortable. Sometimes we even feel less like a Christian because we're weak enough to be overwhelmed by tears. So today, let's talk about the fact that we weep for a reason. God cares and is there to catch our tears. God can use us to make a difference for others who weep and offer hope in the midst. 
and glorious anticipation of eternal promise of no more tears. The story is told of an angel sent to earth to bring back the most precious thing he could find. He searched from pole to pole and into the depths of the sea. He picked up a gold nugget, but it wasn't good enough. He found a flawless pearl. It wasn't enough. Finally, he heard a sob, a man on his knees, pouring out his heart to God for help and forgiveness. The angel said, that's it. He held his hand out into the man's face, caught a tear, and brought it back to heaven, presenting the tear to God as the most precious thing on earth. So what about tears? We weep. Anyone willing to admit to ever having a meltdown? As we prayed for Pastor Aya's brother-in-law, Paul, as he was taken off life support on August 16th, I think the whole Bible study lost it. Whether it's internal or external, happens often or rarely, it is human nature to weep. Before we look at tears in the Bible and the value of our weeping laments, let's look at the anatomy and physiology of tears. We begin life in tears. Mothers cry in labor pain, but blessed results. Babies cry at birth to open their lungs and breathe the precious sound of life. And since birth, tears have been flowing. The numbers are big but not so important. Tears are mentioned hundreds of times in the Bible. And someone calculated that tears shed in our world over all time could fill a canal from New York to San Francisco. Numbers aren't as important as, important as what happens. We have three kinds of tears. A basal tears lubricate and protect the cornea which, with each blink. Reflex tears wash out irritants, wind, smoke, onions. And emotional tears are a uniquely human response to that which touches the soul. Occasionally joy, but more often sorrow, pain, despair, disappointment, or being overwhelmed. It may start with a quivering lip or blinking faster to keep the wetness from escaping. Some people care so much they cry at the drop of a hat. Karen M. and Jim G. told me that they were in that category. Others choose to remain stoic and feel uncomfortable around tears. Yet tears express the inexplicable, reduce emotional tension, and even process it. Psychiatrist Henry, Mo Henry Mosley reminds us the sorrow which has no vent in tears may make other organs weep. That's what we call psychosomatic illness, and it's real, even manifested in headaches, GI disturbances, insomnia, respiratory ailments, and more. Some people cry more often. Anyone here ever cried with a character on TV? or while watching a public service announcement on dogs in need, the reveal of a home makeover for a struggling family, or an Olympian receiving a hard fought for precious medal, weddings, funerals, many things can move us to tears. Sometimes it's biochemical, hormone related. Sometimes it's compassion, and sometimes it's a reminder of times overwhelmed in our past. Some people will have a parasympathetic uh, nervous system response as they listen to music that touches their soul. Have you ever wept during moving music? Crying can cause a puffy red face and headaches, but it can also release tension, hormones to induce mood in the long run, and aid in sleep, even connect us with God or one another through our vulnerability. Emotional tears are portraits of humanity. 
besides tears of rejoicing as with birth, there will be tears of physical pain in the body, emotional pain, loss, rejection, headache, despair, hopelessness, regret, lost opportunity or unretrievable utterances, frustration, expectations not met, depression, loneliness, emptiness, death, even people of the <coughs> resurrection experience desperate missing. Weeping is common to humanity. Let's talk about the weeping prophet Jeremiah in the Bible. Long before Jeremiah was a bullfrog, you might be old enough to remember that famous 1970 song line. Uh, about 2,600 years earlier, Jeremiah was a prophet, spoken of as one of the five major prophets of the Old Testament. Major not because he was more important, but because of the prolific recording of his words. The book of Jeremiah has 52 chapters, and his lamentations also come from the transcription of his scribe, Baruch, recording his words over 40 years. I'm so grateful for this writing team because they give us a picture of the times and life of ancient prophets as no one else does. We might say of Jeremiah today that he wore his emotions on his sleeve. He's called the suffering or weeping prophet. Lamentations is five poems of grief. And in Jeremiah, between warnings and hope, we read many lamentations. He expresses concerns over human opposition, problems of pain and suffering, failure, evil, and injustice. We know such laments today too, don't we? And whether we wear our emotions on a sleeve or simply get in touch with who we are or the concerns of those around us, Jeremiah is a good reminder that the issue about emotions isn't so much denying emotions within us as it is channeling that emotion to understand ourselves and those around us, even God's will. It's then that we can best make a difference. Let's look at a few key verses from the weeping prophet. Jeremiah shares his dramatic call story, a PK, preacher's kid, called at a young age, deeply committed to the Lord's work and charismatic enough for the scribe Baruch to come alongside Jeremiah through a lifetime of thick and thin ministry. He used a lot of imagery and dramatic examples, such as a clay in the potter's hand. He says, our loving God shapes and molds us into God's will for our benefit and will bless our cooperation. Jeremiah had personal reasons to grieve, even as a faithful prophet with an unpopular message of Israel's exile, Jeremiah was persecuted, thrown into prison, dumped in a pit, and beaten. He describes his passion anyway when he says, I would quit if I could, but there's a fire in my bones and I can't shut it up. May we each know such fire in our bones. He grieved for his people he witnessed their strife, oppression, famine, destruction. In his compassion, he felt the gut-wrenching hurt of pain for them. As our text Betty read today says, is there no balm in Gilead? And oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears. I would weep day and night for the slain of my people. Ever been in tears for the plight of people? Jeremiah 29.7 is the theme of our California Nevada Annual Conference this year as we celebrate Presente, God with us, through this pandemic journey, with the suffering of the people, through it all. Will you repeat it after me wherever you are? Presente, God is with us through it all. And again, Presente, God is with us through it all. And Jeremiah had hope within him. 
in the midst, planted there by the God of hope he served. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. Jeremiah shares hope ahead of regeneration, a new covenant, a new heart, even joyous prophecy of mercy, deliverance, and abundant life. And let's look in the New Testament at Jesus, our suffering servant. Jesus Christ himself knew what it meant to weep. Isaiah describes him as a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. Early on, Jesus gives us the Beatitudes and blessed are those that mourn. He knew we would mourn, even missing loved ones. In his humanity, Jesus wept for Lazarus, even though in his divinity, he raised him from the dead. As Pat read today, John 11:35 says, Jesus wept. I used to have confirmation kids choose and recite their scripture verse. One young man chose John 11:35. I suspect because it's the shortest verse in the Bible, at least in English. I told him he could use it if he could describe what it meant to him personally. Upon reflection, he realized it was a deep verse. To understand how Jesus understood us and experienced emotional pain like we do. And on Palm Sunday, known for its rejoicing for Jesus, when he approached Jerusalem, Jesus saw the city and wept over it knowing what it was what was before him and life tragedies his people would endure in the garden of gethsemane jesus sorrow was something like weeping again his whole body wept sweat of blood hematohydrosis what emotional pain his humanity bore the song a king in tears says because those who came, he came to free chose bondage over liberty, but nothing could a charm impart to soothe the Savior's woe, for grief was heavy at his heart and tears began to flow. Many other biblical tears, Ecclesiastes promises a time to weep and we're in good company of criers throughout scripture. For example, Job says, my face is flushed from weeping. Deep darkness is on my eyelids. David and the people with him wept until there was no strength in them to weep. Samuel wept tears over, of sorrow over Saul. Mary wept repentantly and washed Jesus' feet with her tears. David wept in affection for Jonathan. Joseph wept in prayer for his family. Hannah wept in her childlessness. Paul says to weep with those who weep. We also see tears of passion, shame, despair, separation, and death in the Bible. When someone says men shouldn't cry, remember great men of the Bible, like David, Peter, Paul, and of course, even Jesus wept. Weeping in the Bible reminds us tears are a part of life. They won't last forever. They are noticed by God and will be wiped away in eternity. Scriptures remind us God is aware of and cares about our tears. Psalm 56, eight says, you have collected all my tears in a bottle. From toddler burdens of frustration to teen angst, to young adult relationship anxieties, to parental worries and complexities of old age. Every burden, every painful moment and anxiety we face, God is there with us through it all. Another important reminder in the Bible is to keep our eyes on God when tears could cloud our vision. In Psalm 6, 7, David said, my vision is blurred by grief. Ever get so wrapped up in sorrow, you neglect to see blessings? 
purpose and goals of life and the ever-present God alongside us? 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, We grieve, but not as those who have no hope. We are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, and we feel sorrow and cry. Tears are the eloquent language of the soul, the utterances of broken hearts, shattered homes, forgotten hopes. Tears are a language God understands. We may even be brought to tears because of the Holy Spirit within us. Tears can be sacred and holy moments. In my day, United Methodist Church ordination was an eight year journey, more like tenure than entry. The candidate task list was extensive. Five years into the challenging process, I was diagnosed with ALS and given a two to five year life expectancy and things didn't look good for survival to ordination. At the seventh year mark, a clergy colleague candidate contracted a fatal lung disease and suddenly died. By the time I made it to ordination, I was in a wheelchair, but I made it. <coughs> As a bishop consecrated my ministry, a tear ro rolled down my cheek. Against odds, I lived to be ordained and though that was many years ago, what I didn't know then led me to weep to have made it. I thought about that recently as Olympians after long journeys got to the podium, the point of podium medals, uh, masked but a tear running down the face, tears of joy but also of the hard journey. Recently, grandparents and great-grands who finally got to meet their family's babies born during the pandemic wept for joy. Sometimes tears are for joy, but usually for grief, pain, sympathy, fear, or regret. In years as an emergency department registered nurse, I witnessed so many tears of pain and loss including during the Loma Prieta earthquake and Bay Area firestorms. Storms. We all watched many tears of 9-11 and recently exhausted COVID healthcare workers and dying patients. We've seen tears from those who lost it all in fires or other disasters. Those who've experienced miscarriage, <coughs> divorce, or wayward children I did a funeral once for long-awaited twins, and the mother couldn't help but sob and wail throughout the service. The joy is that they are now parents to three beloved children, and for that we rejoice. We can ask with Jeremiah, is there no balm in Gilead? The short answer in retrospect is yes, there is. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. There is a physical balm in Gilead with healing properties. Sometimes God calls us to be the metaphorical balm in Gilead for someone else in tears. Holding, hugging, prayer, tissues, presence, tear catching, God can use us as Jesus in the flesh to come alongside comforting others who are weeping. Jesus reminds us in John 16, 20 that we will grieve, but joy comes in the morning. There's a time to laugh and a time to cry. Crying is temporary. As believers, we cry and feel sad, but we also have hope in Christ and know amazing promises. When we cry, we know we can wipe our tears and press on because God holds us in the palm of God's hand. We can know that in mourning and trials, we know that God has plans for us, hope in the midst, and is making all things work together for our good. Moreover, there is eternal hope. Revelation 21.4 says, 
He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or pain. The promise is no more pain, fear, f fall, sin, hate, loss, worry, hurt feelings, unkind words, war, aging, bad news, nursing homes, funeral arrangements, disease, or waiting for answered prayer. This is the hope of glory set before us. Can we even fathom it? Can we only imagine? Praise God for such promises. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, how blessed we are to know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, even if that includes tears. There's a time for every purpose under heaven, including weeping. Our emotional tears may be those of sorrow, but thank you, Lord, there is hope. We do not grieve as those who have no hope. We are comforted that you care in the midst and collect our tears. We are graced with Jesus who knew what it was like and wept. We are blessed with your abiding presence for each step of the way. And even when we are privileged to come alongside to make a difference for others in their sorrow. And we can know with full confidence your precious promises for comfort. Comfort now and glorious anticipation of eternal promise with no more tears. We praise you for presence and hope. In Jesus' name, all God's people can enthusiastically say, Amen. Merciful Lord, we confess that there is so much that overwhelms us in this life. We experience and see all around us, bodies, that fall, fail, and spirits engulfed. We long for a time with no more fears and no more tears. In the meantime, forgive our unnecessary weeping, even while soothing our tears of humanity. May we give our sorrows to you, even when we have trust issues. Help us to truly trust your mercy and love. O oh Lord, heal and forgive our fears and sins. Open our hearts to receive your mercy and help us to become your disciples. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Feel the grace of Christ, which hears your cries and heals your heart. Though darkness appears all around, there is the comforting, healing light of God's love shining on you and in you. Feel the warmth of the presence of God. You are healed and forgiven. Rejoice. God is with you now and always. Amen. Now that we're back to Zoom Church, it is even more important that we greet one another in Christian fellowship. So, we are all invited to distant, distantly pass the peace at this time, whether it's by a wave, a peace sign, a hand heart, an air hug, or an I love you sign in sign language, please distance greet one another in Christian fellowship. Let us pray. Healing Lord, there are so many situations we have encountered which overwhelm us. We hurt and weep. 
Sometimes we feel like we're broadsided by the impact and other times we are so used to the everyday things that we scarcely notice. Then one day our pain, your pain, the world's pain hits us and we cry out to you. Is there a balm in Gilead? Is there healing? As we await assurance, may we know how you weep for and with us and how you abide with us for each step of the way. And do know hope set before us in your promises of no more pain or sorrow, suffering or tears for eternity. Even as we seek a lifter of our heads and encourager of our souls, help us to work effectively to promote situations of healing and hope. We come before you with so many concerns on our hearts. There seems to be no end to the desperate needs of your people. Yet you love and hear us as we pray. You surround us with your love and healing mercies. You raise us gently and give us courage to work for you in ministries of compassion out of what we have known in our own humanity. We have so much to be grateful for in the midst. Gracious God, we rejoice this day for the many miracles of provision, caregivers, prayer warriors, acts of kindness and love that totally matter. As we struggle yet in this pandemic, we're grateful when we see wisdom, opportunities for blessed, safe connections and careful trotting. We rejoice for hopefulness and pray for those still seeking hope. Thank you, Lord, for purpose and meaning, your beautiful creation, future journeys and your guiding presence. We express special thanksgiving this week for the birthdays of Nancy, Lily, Clarissa, Brian, and Sean, even my birthday on Wednesday, and anniversaries this week for Dave and Jeannie and John and Carol. May we celebrate life. Holy Sustainer, we continue to pray for those suffering in body, mind, or spirit. We lift up those mourning the absence of folks We've had the privilege of holding dear, including now Connie, Bishop Shimana, and Paul. People of the resurrection still struggle with the missing. We pray for our world, national, and local leaders, and pray we'll each be builders of people and communities. We fervently pray for the people of Afghanistan and Haiti, and for those closer to us who have lost homes and are displaced and for firefighters. We lift up those with COVID yet, the heat now, and health issues, including for Bev, Trish, Mildred, Rex and Hilda, Doris, Bill and Sharon, Sherry, Rob, Eloy, Ruth, Meg, Gary, Steve, Betty Jo, Rocky, Chersa and Samuel in the service, and others we name on our hearts now. We pray for peace that passes understanding, glimpses of hope, touches of grace, and a deep sense of your abiding presence, Lord. May we carry on in the name of our Lord who understands, hears, and heals tears, even as we joyfully and confidently lift our voices in the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
United Methodist Church of Merced is grateful for the many ways you live into being the church, living, loving, and serving as the body of Christ, sharing the good news. Together, we've been entrusted with all that we are and all that we have, that we might use our resources of time, talents, efforts, words, works, prayers, presence, and possessions in honor of God who gives us so much. Gifts to the church, whether placed in the offering plate, given online or mailed in, whether produced as service in the food pantry, caring for the church, in ministry or in study, whether in prayer or encouragement, help support ministry and the church, providing a safe space for all and practicing radical hospitality. We are indeed blessed to be a blessing. Thank you. Your gifts matter. Nurturing God, each day we witness untold mercies in the midst of all life holds for us. These are a testament of your love. Some spectacular interventions and everyday acts of compassion quiet, soft, and gentle, guide us to know how our dear Lord comes alongside us and how we can come alongside others. We prayerfully ask that these gifts be used to touch those needing to experience the miracle of your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hear now the benediction. In our humanity, we weep and we come alongside others who weep. How grateful we are to have a God who cares, even weeps with and for us, and comes alongside us for every step of the way, all the way to the promises of eternal peace. Even as our Lord opens us to the way of tears, born out of God's vast love and steeped in hope, may we go forth from this worship, unbound by our fears and tears, full of compassion for others along the way, and always holding on to and knowing the hope set before us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
Amen. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. You tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never Good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. I've seen many searching for far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. 